It was a long road to get here, but President Donald Trump signed the legislation shortly before the calendar turned to 2019. The Farm Bill, of course, helps in shaping agriculture from the field to the dinner table over the next five years. To help make sense of the new Farm Bill, we called in UNL Ag Economist Dr. Brad Lubin. As we see the new Farm Bill <clears throat> now finally passed and awaiting implementation, we think it looks pretty familiar with what we've had before, with the ARC and the PLC program still continuing. But even there, we see some changes that will have to be implemented, some changes to the ARC formula, some changes to the reference price and the payment yields on the PLC side, both of which will affect the producer uh, and the decision to be made here this spring over sign up in the new bill. And some folks in particular, uh, Iowa Senator Chuck Grassley, he was critical of the expansion of federal subsidies right. for cousins, nieces, nephews uh, of farmers, even if they don't work on the farm. Do mm -hmm, you see a mm -hmm. problem with that? Well, we saw several proposals addressing payment limits and payment eligibility that are often brought up almost annually in appropriations and other debates, but certainly every farm bill cycle. Uh, all of those really did end up <clears throat> on the wayside. Uh, the one proposal that did make its way through wasn't to tighten limits. It, you're right, it was to expand them. Uh, we currently have program rules where uh, siblings are considered family for obvious reasons and thus an operation, a family operation of siblings uh, is uh, uh, eligible for uh, payments uh, under different rules than non-family members. But when that operation goes first from uh, maybe parent to children and the siblings are farming together and now the siblings are moving it on to the next generation, well those are no longer technically family in the old definition nieces, nephews, and cousins would be outside the definition of family and much tighter rules relative to eligibility and contributions on the farm. This loosens that rule so that the third generation is effectively still part of the same family operation. To the extent it keeps family operations together as a family entity uh, and a family uh, unit, then this helps family operations continue to succeed uh, through successive generations. Uh, to the extent that this uh, loosens the eligibility rule and, and makes more off-farm heirs uh, part of the, uh, the farm operation for payment purposes, uh, it does uh, stretch out the, the current payment eligibility, um, but it's a, sort of a philosophical debate about whether this is or isn't uh, uh, sort of growing the, the family beyond the, the, the core unit. And uh, dairy farmers, they're getting some extra protection in the bill too. Thoughts on right. that? There was a huge push to reform dairy policy uh, relative to the last Farm Bill. Uh, the last Farm Bill introduced the Dairy Margin Protection Program, uh, protecting a feed price minus or a milk price minus feed cost margin. But there wasn't particular uh, uh, sign up, substantial sign up for the program under the last bill. There wasn't much satisfaction with how the bill actually worked and how the program operated. There were changes early in 2018 to that existing program. Uh, to try and make it a bit more uh, appealing to producers. There were substantial changes in the Farm Bill now finally at the end of 2018 that actually renames the program. It's no longer the Margin Protection Program, but it's the Dairy Margin Coverage Program. Uh, but it's still effectively a milk price minus feed cost program. Lower premiums for uh, smaller producers, up to 4 million pounds of milk a year. Uh, substantial increases in sort of affordability and attractiveness of the program. So a big win for dairy all around. Uh, also, the bill introduces some permanent funding on some things that just had temporary funding in the past, uh, things like uh, organic farmers or organic farming, training new farmers, mm -hmm. things for veterans, <coughs> minority farmers. Could you speak on that a little bit? Well, we typically saw that a farm bill we first tend to focus on the commodity programs, the crop insurance programs, the conservation programs, and of course the nutrition program. All those together are typically about 99% of the total. So all of the other titles, while substantially important to a particular uh, uh, interest or area, um, are a relatively small part of the bill. Uh, it's been easy to sort of gloss over those and say yes, we continue to provide support in, in different ways. Uh, but for something like organic production or some of the new value-added products, we typically saw a portfolio of tools over time. We saw rural development uh, title programs that, that provided funding and grants. We saw research and education uh, funding in that direction. 
We saw a specific horticulture title that provided some uh, support in, in, uh, in those specialty crops and, and those new markets. Uh, this all continues to provide a little bit more stability, a little bit more uh, certainty that there, are, there will be continued investments and growth in uh, attraction and, and opportunities here in these other markets. And finally, from the uh, people that you've talked to, what do they like about the new bill, things mm -hmm. they don't like, what have you heard? Well, from the commodity interests that we, that we typically hear from, having a very familiar program between ARC and PLC going forward, uh, maintaining the status quo was sort of what was expected going into the bill, and so we know what we have coming out. But the new decisions are critically important to producers, and so having a new choice is certainly a, uh, a real plus here. Uh, you're not locked into the same decision you made back in 2014. You have a new decision coming up here in 2019. And in fact, as the way the, the commodity program was written, there's a new decision in 2019 that covers the 19 and 20 crop years. And then starting in 2021, there will be a new decision every year. So we no longer have the potential buyer's remorse or regret over what we chose or didn't choose. Uh, eventually, it'll be an annual decision with uh, perhaps more informed uh, opportunities to, to decide which program works best. And here's another thing that has people talking. The new farm bill legalizes the growing of industrial hemp. Now, hemp had been part of the Controlled Substances Act due to the relation to its more notorious cousin, marijuana. Proponents of hemp point to its medicinal benefits and its use in making things like paper, clothing, and building materials. <music>